Hello, 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 hello. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Hi, guys. Um, sorry, it's just gone uh, eight minutes past nine, running a few minutes uh, late. But uh, here we are. I've got this new new device here, the Joby thing. Uh, and it's much appreciated. Um, <clears throat> give you guys a few moments to catch up, and then I'll, you know, begin. In the meantime, Indian tea. Uh, can you hear me, by the way? Just let me know if you can hear me. Yeah, Manveer Dalival, I showed up. Michelle Poe, thank you very much. Superstar Michelle. Yes, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night. Elvis has left the building. Um, <laughs> Prajesh, yeah, you're a, you're, you're a, you're a master. You, you, you text me at about uh, one minute to nine saying, is it today? Yes, it's today. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, good good morning and uh, good evening and uh, hello to everyone. We've got uh, Asia, uh, we've got America, we've got the South America, we've got Europe, uh, some Aussies. Uh, just waiting for a few penguins from Antarctica to come on board. Hey, <laughs> can you can you hear me? By the way, just let me know. Um, you know, a few ticks, uh, love hearts, or just even in the comments say yes, we can hear you. Ah. Lovely, Taj. By the way, Taj, uh, well done on your on your on your weekend session uh, with Kulmahe. That was fantastic. Um, greetings from Greece. Ah, oh, that's all I can say. So, welcome to episode six of Mind Blast Monday. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, Helen, you can hear me. Tez, my brother. Ah, oh, you know. I was going to have some Indian tea, wasn't I? So here we are. Ah, oh, lovely. Yep. Michelle, lovely to see you. Thank you for all the uh, rock star stuff that you do. Um, uh, Tez, everybody else. I see that you guys are, you can hear me. And I'll give you like 30 seconds. Make sure you've got yourself some um, uh, pens, some paper, um, something to drink. <clears throat> Um, painkillers if you need them, because this could be painful. Uh, tranquilizers, no, none of that. And uh, we shall begin. So in 10, 9, 8, masala chai. Um, yes. Is there any other? I mean, like, is there any other? By the way, Manavir, this is still the best cup of Indian tea in the world. I know you say you make a cracking good tea uh, all, all the way in the USA, but this is. But you can send it to me telepathically, so that's all great. Right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Um, sorry, I'm a few minutes late. Um, I've just uh, come back uh, from uh, my shift, you know, where I'm you know, looking after my father, my superhero. Um, and uh, as I just got back um, and just had to wolf some food down, uh, get myself presentable and, uh, and uh, share some time with you here today. Um, ah, Elena. You know, Elena is a real rock star. She's been going through episode one, two, three, four, five, and she's gone through all the homework, um, doing all the self-work. And this is key, you know, guys, you know, this is not for my benefit. I'm sharing uh, time with you, uh, hopefully some wisdom as well, and some fun and entertainment uh, for your benefit. And I hope you're getting tremendous value, because you will. Um, and do share it with your teams and, and, and uh, your businesses, your family and your friends. Uh, and, and maybe even if you've got some enemies, share it with them as well, because, you know, everybody could do with some positive love and energy. Um, so, yeah, <clears throat> Rory, fantastic. I, I left you guys with a mission last week, if you remember, uh, and that was to tell, to share the, the live of last week with 10 people and ask them to share with 10 people each. Now, did you do that? Did you do that? If you didn't do it, and you said that you would, what does that say about you? Hmm? What does it say? It says that maybe you were in a little bit of an action faker mode. And you know what? In life, action faker is not going to get you where you want to get to. Uh, Michelle, Michelle Carmela Saldana, I hope you are well on the way to recovery. I knew you had some medical challenges, but you know we're, we're here with you, giving you support and healing. And, and uh, Brother Walter and... Great. Yeah. So, you know, if you say something, you don't have to say it to me, but if you say 
that you're going to do something, do it. Because at the end of the day, it's your life. And you've got one life. You've got to make it count. So sometimes people say things, oh, you know, you're not in a work environment where your boss is coercing you and saying, you must do this. Yeah, that would be fearful. But if you say to yourself, I will step up and do this, then do it. Don't say you're going to do something and then fail to do it. Because success and failure is all about a pattern of behavior. And you've got to check that pattern of behavior. Uh, my, my, my lovely niece, Maya, she's great. You know that. She's always here. You know, um, appreciate it. Say hi to the whole, whole family. Right, so <clears throat> last week, one of the things you had to do, to share the video with six people and ask them to share with, sorry, share the video with 10 people and ask them to share with 10 people each. And then remind them, did you do it? Didn't you do it? You know, if you didn't do it, bottom spank. Yes, bottom spank. Uh, likewise, this video, share with 10 people and ask them to share with 10 people each. And part of this is really, it's like a test. It's to get you to start using your mental muscle. Start getting you into doing some simple actions. And people, you know, it's not difficult. You know, it's, 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 it's uh, you know, click and share, click and share, click and share, click and share. But send it with a message. This is something I found really valuable. I think you'll find it very valuable. Share it with 10 people you know. Do me a favor. And, you know, as you start to embrace and exercise that mental muscle, guess what? You will go from action faker to action taker because you do that step. What else can you do? What else can you do? What else can you do? Simple steps. Right, let's get on with it. Today, what are we talking about? We're talking about going from fear, <gasps> fear to rocket fuel or hashtag rocket fuel or hashtag rocket fueled because uh, that's the best place to live. Now, if I'm speaking, if I'm speaking 150 miles an hour, that's uh, because you know, it's sleep deprivation uh, coupled with Indian tea and all your wonderful energy. So, um, you know, um, by the way, you know, let me know and uh, do, do um, you know, if you're getting something of value, etc. And if something you get an aha moment, write it down in the comments because it would help people. Yeah, it would help people. Michelle Poe, fantastic. And Michelle Poe, Sean Poe, rock stars. You know, we did a mega live, a mega Zoom, uh, a seminar, in fact. It's on my wall. It's on Michelle and Sean's wall. You know, it's a whole seminar on, on transforming your life. And it was a conversation. We just went on for two and a half hours. And it's amazing stuff. And if you haven't been there, go and check it out. Yeah, go and check it out. And all these episodes, you know, the information is, is on my wall do the homework. Right. What are we talking about? We're talking about going from fear to rocket fuel. Now, fear is a subject that comes up a lot for a lot of people a lot of the time. But what is fear? Well, first of all, it's a four-letter word. So, is that four letters? One, two, three, four. Phew. <laughs> I was chopping very fast. Could have lost a finger. So, yeah, it's a four-letter word. But there are lots of four-letter words like... Um, Keep it clean, keep you know, it's past the 9 p.m. threshold. So faffing, faff is a four-letter word. Like is a four-letter word. Uh, lust, mm. love, hope. These are just four-letter words. But fear is this thing that seems to keep people stuck. You know, they're stuck. They, they, it's, it's something that just tends to stop them flowing through the journey of life. So, think about it this way. <laughs> Laurie, no, it's not a four-letter word. <laughs> What's the meaning we give to a four-letter word? Like love. If I was to give you the word love, what would it mean to you? Ultimately, likewise with fear, it's the meaning you give to something. It's all about your perspective. So how you about how you think about things. Now you might say, well, this is all woo-hoo, but re reality is you say to some people, you know, uh, I love this or I love you or etc. And love means so many different things to so many different people. Likewise with fear, it's the meaning you give it. But that's often based on your life experiences so far. Yes or yes? Yes, I think so. 
I mean, hope is a wonderful word, but again, it means different things to different people based on their perspective. What I want to do is I want to, you know, I mean, I would love to work with all of you all the time, but time is ticking. So I want to get on with a few things straight away. The first thing, if you want, if you are living in a state or you're experiencing fear, yeah, which is, you know, I think let's take a general generic or general generic. <laughs> a general generic would be like if you're scared of something. And some people, the levels of how scared you are are variable. Some people are petrified. Some people are a little bit cautious. Some people are terrified. Yeah. So even fear itself has different levels of intensity. But ultimately, it's, it tends to keep you stuck. Fear tends to keep you stuck in a nutshell. Write that down. Fear tends to keep you stuck. It's seldom a good thing. Yeah? It will keep you in your work. It will keep you in that relationship. It will keep you stuck in the past, stuck in the present. So fear is something that keeps you stuck. How, how, how strong it impacts upon you depends on how your perspective, your emotions, etc. But what I want to do is I want to give you a little formula that has helped hundreds of thousands of people now. You know, I mean, I, I'm an expert in rapid radical transformation. You know, I'm not into this slow, slow, slow stuff, you know. Yes, you know, and the more work you do, the faster you get there. Do you get that? Yep. The faster you take action and the more intensity you take action with, the faster you can fuel yourself. Fuel is a good word. Yeah, if you run out of fuel, what happens? You get stuck. So it's the antidote to fear. Fear keeps you stuck. Fuel gives you momentum. Fear keeps you stuck. Fuel gives you momentum. And rocket fuel, different level altogether. By the way, is this angle all right? I've got this Joby thing, you know, so, uh, which is very good. That's for once. I can use both hands. People said to me, we only ever see one of your hands. Where's the other hand? I said, hey, behave. I'm holding the phone. So where was I? First thing I want you to do is I want you to identify what it is. Yeah, identify it. What is it that you are stuck about? Are you, for most people, it's fear of change. Yeah? So, is it for you um, fear of staying in the same place, uh, fear of staying in the same job, uh, fear of the past, fear of the present, fear of the future? What is it? Identify it. Because if you don't identify it, don't is another four-letter word, if you don't identify it, thank you, Laurie, if you don't identify it, how are you going to tackle it? Yeah. So it's like with it's like the simple. It's, it's, it's very simple. You know, if you've got a challenge, you've got to be be able to identify the challenge. Then you can formulate a policy, a system, a strategy, a technique, a tactic, something to help you overcome the challenge. But you need to be able to identify the challenge. So identify it. What is it that you are fearful of? For many people, it's it's it, it, it's it's you know past experiences haunt them in the present and rob them of the future. Does that make sense to you? Past experiences rob them of the present or keep, sorry, past experiences haunt them in the present and rob them of the future. Fear of the unknown, leave. Yeah. Sometimes you don't know what's out there. So you never go out there. And what does that rob you of? Adventure, curiosity, success, relationships, health. What does it what does it do? Yeah. The better you can identify something, the more powerful you will feel. And I'll show you how to feel more powerful. Would that be alright with you if I share that with you? How to feel more powerful? Oh, sleep deprivation. I can still see you. Can you see me? Of course you can. <laughs> Because I've taken off my glasses, you haven't taken off yours. Um, so the first thing is identify, put it in, in bold, block, you know, fluorescent ink or whatever. Identify it. What exactly is it? The second thing is specificity. 
Hmm, that's a big word. Specificity. What I mean by that is, having identified what you are fearful of, like for example, say, let's take the example of in business. You know, you, 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 sometimes you're fearful of making that phone call. If you're network marketing, how do, I, how do I bring in more prospects? People will say no to me. If you're in any business, you need to have sales. Yeah, you need to sell. And a lot of people say, well, I don't know how to sell. Well, look, everybody is selling themselves in some way. It's the reason I'm wearing this shirt, because it's the only one that's ironed, actually. But no, no, you know, when you go out, you know, you comb your hair in a certain way, you know, you, you, you wear a certain perfume or you wear a certain cologne, you know, you're marketing yourself all the time. So, for example, in network marketing, you may be fearful, well, how do I make those phone calls? What do I say? What do they say no? Fear of rejection. And these things are, I'm not saying fear is not real. It exists. You know, it exists. I'm not one of these people who say, oh, it's all in your mind and just forget about it. And, you know, no, no, it's real. But you need to be able to do something about it. You know, bills are real. You know, bills come in. You've got to pay your bills. You can't just magic them away. But you've got to identify it. So, for example, let's take the advantage of, of, of uh, the example of uh, network marketing. Or, at the same time, a relationship that you're in. And you're thinking, well, he's going to leave me, or she's going to leave me, or I need to leave here, or something has to change. What has to change? Just get specific. What has to change? You know, sometimes it's money. For a lot of people, it's money. Fear of, of not having enough. Fear of struggle. Fear of losing your home. Losing your health. All these are genuine fears. But you've got to do something about it. So you've got to identify it. So and we'll come back to this. The, how do you get over the phone calls? You know, etc. 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 But for a lot of people, and you've had this for everyone. Yeah. So not just for a few, but for everyone. Yeah. You've got to ask yourself, what is it you actually want? See, fear will keep you stuck. But stuck from what? So you've got to write down, what is it keeping me stuck from having or achieving? What is it keeping me stuck from having or achieving? Because if you don't know what you want, what difference does it make? Does this make sense to you? What is it stopping you from having or achieving? <laughs> what is it stopping you? What is it stopping you from having? It could be stopping you from having um, more, you know, uh, the fear of making those phone calls is stopping you from having more money coming in so that you are unable to, to, to meet your bills, uh, to live in the house that you want to live in, uh, to, to get that tutoring that you want for your kids or, or, or that tutoring that you want or those classes that you want to go on. It's stopping you from something. That's why, I mean, it, it's, it's causing you to be stuck. But what is it causing you to be stuck from? So you need to identify what is it that it is keeping you from having or achieving. And the greater the specificity, whew, the more powerful you'll become. And why am I paralyzed? <laughs> Yeah, because for most people, which is why I say hashtag don't be most people, it's something that can be sorted out. Yeah, you may say, well, I don't know how to make those phone calls, but can you learn? Is there somebody in your business or in your team that is great at making those phone calls? Oh, I'm not sure how to do presentations. Is there someone in your team or someone you know who is great at doing presentations? Is there someone or something I can learn? That's the next stage. Is there something or someone I can learn or learn from? Write that down. See, if you ask a better question, you get a better answer. Ah, oh, my brother John Bermuda is on. Brother John. Yeah? 
So you might think, oh, we only have lots of questions. Yes, yes. Because questions, better questions, give better answers, give clarity. And clarity gives you focus. And focus gives you power. So you move from fear to fuel. Is this kind of making sense to you? It's a bit like those jigsaw puzzles, you know? But I don't actually give you the whole picture. I come from different angles. And then suddenly you go, whoa, how did that happen? Yeah? So is there something or someone you can learn from or about? So sometimes it's lack of knowledge. Sometimes it's lack of money. Sometimes it's lack of support. Or your perception. Because actually, it's all about your resourcefulness. Write this down. It's not about your resources. It's about your resourcefulness. Now you may say, well, I, I, I don't have any money and I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have any money. Listen. God forbid. Someone you know, someone you love, has to undergo an emergency operation. It's life-saving. And if you don't come up with the money, they're going to die. What are you going to do? You're going to just sit there thinking, well, I don't have the money, let them die? Is that what you're going to say? No, you'll dig deep, won't you? You'll start asking better questions. You'll, start, you'll, you'll ask your friends, you'll, you'll, you'll get a second job, you'll get a third job, you'll stand on your head. I don't know, but you'll do something, won't you? you get out of being stuck and into motion and momentum. Yes? So don't give me that excuse. And most important, don't give yourself that excuse. It's not about your resources. It's all about resourcefulness. And we're going to come to that. Sorry, I keep banging the table here. <laughs> yeah? It's about your resourcefulness. And what is resourcefulness about? It's about your perception and your priorities. So write that down. Resourcefulness is about your perception and your priorities. Because ultimately, this is what I've found. Once you've identified what it is, what's your fear, identify it. Fear of change, fear of the past, fear of the present, fear of the future. Once you've identified it, then you get specificity. What is stopping you from having or achieving? Who can I learn from or how can I learn something is the next question. Then you go to, and this is a very nice four-letter word that a lot of people are terrified of. It's called work. And I give you homework. Self-work. A couple of four-letter words in conjunction there. Yeah? But if, you, if it's getting you where you want to get to, then it's not arduous. It's a blessing. You think, bloody hell, I can't wait to do more work. Because it's getting me where I want to get to. You know, I want to make those phone calls. You know, I've connected with somebody that's, that, that's really great at three-way phone calls. I've, I've connected with somebody that's great at presentations. I've connected with somebody who is prepared to show me how they build a team. I've connected with somebody that knows how to set goals. Because if you don't set goals, guess what? You're scoring own goals. Always have a goal for everything. Yeah, if you don't set a goal, you're set scoring own goals. So, you know, I found someone who can teach me this and will share with me. Because if you ask, believe it or not, most people, generally speaking, will help you. But you've got to go to work. Don't just gather information. Because if you just gather information, it's like what I say. It is literally like getting a book, just putting it on the shelf, or getting a book and reading it and putting it on the shelf. Great. Shelf help. It's no good for you. It's no good for the shelf. No good for the trees. You're chopping down trees. Do self help. That's, again, a string of four-letter words together. See, people are terrified of four-letter words, but the right four-letter words can be very empowering. Yes? So do self-help. Go to work. And why is that important? Do you know why it's important? Because when you learn from someone and you implement it, you start to get into motion. Previously, when you're in a state of fear, you're in a state of paralysis because of your emotion. Now I need you to get from your emotion of paralysis into your motion of momentum. 
And work does that. Work overwhelms it. Write that down. Work overwhelms it. It does. In life, you know, you got a deadline and you're struggling. Guess what? And you go to work on it, you'll overcome it. You're walking along and there's a train to catch and it normally takes you 10 minutes to get there and you only got 8 minutes to get to the station and that train is really important to you. Guess what? You'll run. You'll put in the work. You'll raise your intensity. Does this make sense, by the way? If it, if it doesn't, God knows, what can I do? <laughs> yeah, hopefully this is helping you. Share it with your teams. Share it in, implement it in your life. This is not about me. This is about you. This is about what we can do together to make the world a better place. Yeah, but if you're stuck, if you're stuck all the time, guess what? You're a liability to yourself and everybody else. And you're too good to be like that. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah, sorry. Learning allows you to help the people in your team. Let's learn so we can help others by helping ourselves. Fantastic. Love that. Thank you, Laurie. Much appreciated. So you've got to, you know, it's like with everything else. You know, hope is a wonderful four-letter word. But hope by itself is not enough. Please write this down. You can hope for a better life. Or you can train for a better life. Hope is great. You can hope for a better life. Or you can train for a better life. Diane from Australia, Melbourne. Good day. <laughs> yeah? And what does that training mean? It means work. Go to work on yourself. And le learn to love the process. Because you're doing it for you. Like, let's take this example of Usain Bolt. Bolt, for letter word. And I've said this before. He didn't just sit there thinking, well, I want to be the fastest 100 meter runner in the world that's ever lived. He put in the training. He put in the training when he hated the training initially. But then he realized he was getting stronger, getting faster, he's getting more powerful. And then you put in more work because now you can see the results. You're getting out of your state of stuckness into motion. Out of your emotion that paralyzes you into your motion and momentum. This is really important. I've written something down to remind myself something. Yeah. Work. Who can you work with? When will you work with them? How will you work with them? Ask. But when you ask someone for their help and they offer you their help, take it. And honor them by putting in the work because they don't have to help you. But when someone says, I will help you, I'll be there, I'll support you, I'll guide you, I'll teach you what I know. Like I say, in network marketing, there's a lot of people who are in network marketing around here, but this applies to everyone in life. You know, if you, if someone is saying, I will teach you what I know so you can be the best version of you and you will make money in the process and then you say, mm, let me see, let me see, let me ponder this. You'll be pondering and wondering for a long, long time. And you get one life. Another four-letter word. See, people think there's only just a couple of rude four-letter words. But no, no, there's lots of good letter words as well. Even in the right context. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> yeah? You've got to do that. Go to work. Now, this is really important. You need to make a decision. But a well-constructed and structured decision that empowers you is decisive. A well-constructed and structured decision that empowers you is decisive. A decision that is fundamentally weak and not thought out is divisive. Does that make sense to you? Why is it divisive? Because if you don't really know how to make a decision, your energies are going to be woo, all over the place. So how do you get to decision? Well, you've got to know what your priorities are. Yeah? You need to know what your priorities are. Like, I, you know, listen, doesn't mean I've got it all sorted. 
But generally speaking, I'm, you know, the YKJ principle reminds me. You said you want to do this and you didn't. Yeah? You need to know what is important and significant to you. This is why I said earlier on, what's your fear? Identify it. Spec get specificity. Know what is stopping you from having or achieving. Your why. Got to know that. Based on that, you'll be able to make the decisions that you need to make. What do I need to learn? Who do I need to learn from? How do I learn these things? Then go to work. And you'll have a whole list of priorities. Well, what is your paramount priority? Go and work only on that. What is your paramount priority? So all of these things are based on you taking responsibility. Hey, my brother Rod's there, everyone. Rod Moley, great brother. Great to see you. What is your paramount priority? Because I tell you what, once you know what is important to you, and you know that by doing the work from the leaders in your team and the people that you know and YouTube and from me and other people, once you know what's important to you and you know how to go about it, you can start to take steps. For example, if you know you've got to get, let's just take an example, you need 100 customers in your business or 100 distributors, whatever it is. Well, 100 might sound like a big number, but you can chunk it down, can't you? You can say, well, let's get 10. And then we'll get the next 10. And the next 10. So how do I get the first 10? Do I know anybody, anybody that's managed to get 10 distributors or 10 customers? Well, I, I know a couple who've got a couple of thousand, but do I know anyone who's got 10? Fine. How did you get the 10? And pay attention. Learn from them. Because what happens is, the greater your clarity, the stronger your focus, and that gives you power. And the more action you take, the more confident you become. People are always saying to me, Kerry, I want to be more confident. I'll say, well, what are you prepared to do about it? Well, um, I'll say, why do you want to be more confident? Well, mm, what is the lack of confidence? Uh, how is it showing up in your life? Well, um, I say, listen, find out why this lack of confidence, this, this, this feeling that you don't have confidence, this sense of lack, this fear, what is it? Identify it. Get specificity. How is this stopping you from having the life that you want or the results that you want to achieve for you or your loved ones? Go and work with someone. What is it you think could help you? Would it, be, would it be going on a program? Would it be going on a training? Would it be shadowing somebody? What is it you need to do? Then go to work on it and make a strong, well-structured, powerful decision because that will empower you. But if you make a fundamentally weak decision, it will drain you and it'll be divisive of your energy. So you've got to know what you want. You've got to have focus. And then go and do it in bite-sized portions. This is, this is not rocket science, but for the people that pay attention and actually go to work, this is rocket fuel. Yes or yes? Because the greater the clarity you have, and the more work you do, as you get through each milestone, doesn't mean you won't get challenges, but that's okay, it's a challenge. It's not going to keep you stuck. You identify the challenge, you think, aha, uh -huh, that's the challenge, right? What is it stopping me from having? Is what I want more important than being stuck? Yes. Who do I know that can help me get through this challenge? Ask them for help, take their advice, implementation. Start, repeat, carry on. Then you'll have certainty about where you're going. You'll have more confidence. And guess what? The more confident you become, your fears will start to dissolve. Now, someone asked me, does it, does it actually mean that you'll never have any fears in your life? Hmm. No. 
you're always going to have something come up, something, sometimes something can blindside you. Yeah? But does it also mean you won't have any challenges in your life? I mean, what kind of a life would you want if you never have any challenges? So you never grow. So you never have the best health. So you never have the best relationship with your spouse or your significant other or both. <laughs> yeah? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. So, 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 you, so you never work on your business. I mean, you're not living then. You're just basically surviving. Lie down and save the oxygen for the people that want to make the world a better place. Yeah? So the challenge is help you to change but they'll also help you to transform so don't be afraid of challenges i mean i work with some billionaires and I mean, uh, this is the analogy everyone's in the uk everyone's doing their taxes because the end of tax year yeah well end of tax year in april but you got to submit your tax returns by the 31st of january now you know you're self-employed and you might just be working on on, 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 on your own taxes or you could, in some people, have some billionaires and they've got conglomerates. So they have a bigger tax issue. And people say, oh, well, but they've got accountants. Yeah, but someone's still got to instruct the accountants and then make sure that the accountant's advice is something that's palatable and makes sense. And remember, not all accountants' advice is palatable. The famous Dick Branson story, if you missed it, it's on my wall. Check it out. Because what happens is when you start to take action, consistently you will get results and the more action you take the faster the results and then you fall in love with the process you've got to love the process sometimes it's challenging sometimes it's hard sometimes it's weary it's tiresome a lot of people will knock you down but hey unless they're paying your bills their opinions don't count yeah Everyone's got an opinion about something. I'm sure you've, you know, got an opinion as well about something and this and that. Look, opinions don't pay the bills. Yeah? Go to work on your life. Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense to you? So, right, in closing, fear. Four-letter word. Identify it. Bold and block, colour, fluorescent. Identify it. Like even I made some notes. Yeah? Because there's so much stuff here. I mean, I, I run workshops where I really go into the whole of this and, you know, you'll never be the same again in a nice way. Yeah? And I'd love to work with you guys and, and share these workshops with you and, you know, because you, cause you deserve it. You deserve the best life. So, identify it. You know, is it your fear of change of the past or staying the same, fear of your, or, 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 of your current circumstances, fear, fear of a job, fear of picking up that phone call? What is it? Identify it. Because if you can identify it, you can own it instead of it owning you. When you identify it, you own it. You say, right, my friend, Mr. Fear or Ms. Fear or, or Mrs. Fear or I don't know, but you identify it, yeah? Or Miss LGBT Fear, I don't know. You know, well, you identify it. Get specificity. This is really, really powerful. What is it stopping you from having or achieving? And why is that important to you? Because what is it you want to achieve? If you don't know what you want to achieve, then it's not really fear. It's like, what's the big deal? You've got to know what you want. Work with people. Ask them for help. And go to work. Go to work. Do it. I mean, you work for your employer, don't you? You don't, you know, skirt around the edges there. You work hard. So why don't you work for yourself properly? Stop doubting. Yeah? It's a four-letter word, stop. Stop doubting. If you know someone who's been able to go from where you are to a much better place, if they can do it, you can do it. Simple. And there's hundreds and thousands and millions of people that will help you. I will help you you know reach out to me by the way you know connect with me on facebook send me a message though you know like i guess some people just add add at least i don't have time to go to just add send me a message if you haven't got the headspace to even write me a message and say hey kiri i saw you on michelle and, Sh and sean's a mega zoom or i saw you on your program here or this was a, a share that someone sent to me thank you very much. if you haven't got the time for that 
you know, what are you valuing? Yeah, you want to build a relationship with me? Is this how you build a relationship with somebody else? Think about it. How you do one thing is how you do everything. Yeah, is that how you're communicating with your loved one? Hey, hi, is it going? Oh, hi, 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 hi. Pretty soon that hi will become bye. Yeah. So connect, learn to communicate. It's not difficult. We do it all the time, but learn to communicate effectively. So send me a message. Connect with me. Please connect with me. Make a well-constructed, powerful decision. But you've got to know what your priorities are. Prioritize your priorities and follow what is of paramount importance. And everything else is just psh, waffle. Do what is important and significant. Don't just be busy. That's a four-letter word, but it's just busy. What's busy? If you notice, if you're doing something you enjoy, you're never busy. Work. Oh, I'm busy. But when you're at play, are you busy? No. When you're at dancing, are you busy? No. You don't get a phone call even in a nightclub if you can get the reception. And you say, oh, I'm busy dancing. Do you? You don't say, I'm busy dancing. Or I'm busy in a Michelin star restaurant having a fantastic meal. You don't. So when you enjoy something, you're never busy. Are you? True. Fact. Four-letter word. Fact. Sound like another four-letter word. We won't go into that. But more specificity and the more work you do, it'll give you certainty. And certainty gives you power. And as you go through each step consistently and you put in the work, you pick up momentum. And that gives you confidence. So sometimes you might get knocked down, but you'll have the wherewithal to get up and do something about it. And confidence is sexy. It's a four-letter word I like. It's also powerful. So, homework for this week, it's two stages. Share this video with 10 people, minimum 10 people, and ask them to share with 10 people each. But send them a message, don't just say hi, you know, say, this is something I found really, really valuable. I think you'll love it, and please can you share with 10 people each, as a favor to me, as a favor to you, I, so, so, yeah? So share this video with 10 people, and ask them to share with 10 people each. For next week, Monday Mind Blast, invite 10 people, ask them to invite 10 people each. And you may think, well, why? Well, I'm testing your mental muscle. I'm testing your mental muscle. If you don't have the wherewithal to use your little finger and just click and share and write a message, and then you say you want to go and change your life. Well, really? Really? I said, really? Of course not. You're better than that. So do this, yeah? I'm not mocking you. I'm just, you know, making a point. Don't lie. You can lie to me if you want to, but don't lie to yourself, yeah? Share the link. Tell them to look at it. Ask them for their feedback. You know, you want to build a relationship, like in your team. If you have a strong relationship, your team will work and they'll rock with you. So if you have team meetings, this is really important. You know, when you have team meetings, Rock up to your team meetings. If it's an in-person team meeting, like an event, go to your team meetings. If it's an online, go to it, because you're going to get valuable information. People are always saying, let me know what to do. Well, rock up at your team meeting. And if you're network marketing, one thing I say is learn your product. If you learn your product and your service, guess what? And you know it's damn good. Use it. Use the product or service yourself, because then you can become an ambassador for it. Yeah, if I said to you, there's a movie I've, I've heard about, I'm told it's pretty good, but I haven't seen it myself, but a lot of other people are saying it's pretty good, but I actually haven't seen it, I think you should go and see it. Are you going to go and watch it? No. But if I say, I've seen this movie, I love it, it's amazing, you should go and see it. Are you going to go and see it? Yes. But too many people are fakers. Don't be fake, for letter word. Think about it. If, I've, if someone's telling me about a great restaurant, but they haven't been there themselves, I might think, okay, maybe I'll check it out. But if you said to me, uh, there's a lot of people talking about this restaurant, and I've been there, and the food is great, and the service is fantastic, and the music is wow. Guess what? It's my connection with you, isn't it? I'm more likely to go and do it. That's how you build a relationship. So when you share the video, don't just say click and go. Tell them, hey, I found great value here. 
I want you to look at this video and share with 10 people and please give me your feedback on this. Because what happens is when you are giving feedback, you're sharing, you're learning, you're supporting each other, you're building a connection. And if you build a strong connection, you can work with them. You know who you can rely on in your team. Does that make sense to you? Yes? So, four-letter word for you. Get real. Real is the four-letter word, yeah? And if you do these things, you will go from I know to I work and into flow. Got it? You will go from I know into I work and then I flow. Julie Brooks, superstar. And that's how you go from your fear, because now you've identified it. You've, you've got specificity. You know what to do. You ask for help. You go to work on it. You make a committed, powerful decision, one that empowers you. You've got your priorities sorted and you work only on the important and significant stuff. You look at what needs to be done, you break it down into bite-sized pieces, and you go to work. And, with, and when you go to work on these things, because it's bite-sized pieces and you know that it's part of taking you to where you need to be, you have more certainty. Certainty and clarity is power. And the more you do and the faster you do it, the greater the confidence you have. And with greater confidence, with greater intensity, and greater fuel, you are ready to take off. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Kirit Pankania. Send me your feedback and... You know, any questions, you know, ask Michelle Poe <laughs> or Michelle Saldana. Saldana, Carmela Saldana, I like that name. Or Rod Bowley or Prajesh or any other people here. No, no, come back to me, Marjo, come back to me, you know, leave everyone. Look, you know, any questions, come back to me. And yeah, give me your feedback. But are you going to do it? The three things you've got to do, you've got to share this video with people and tell them why you find it valuable, ask for their feedback. For next week, invite people to the Monday Mind Blast and some additional homework for you. This is the third part. What I want you to do is I want you to actually write down what was keeping you stuck. What was it keeping you? What was this, this fear? What was it keeping you stuck from having? So what was your fear? What was it keeping you stuck from having or achieving? What and who could help you make a powerful decision, a committed decision to get that help and break down into bite-sized pieces the action that you are committed to taking. Got it? That's your homework. Do that. If you want to share it with me, you want to send it, you can put it on here. You can send me an inbox message or inbox message, or what it's called. You know what I mean. Messenger message. Yeah? Do that. So write down what is it your fear? What is it stopping you from having? Who do I need to speak to? Or what can I learn and from whom? What work can I do? Make a decision. You know, prioritize your priorities and work on the most important and significant ones. Break it down into bite-sized pieces. If you've got to ring 20 people and you think, whoa, 20 people is too many, five people. I'm going to ring five people. Who am I going to learn from? And do it. I'm going to show the plan to seven people this week, one a day. Seven in a day is too much. One a day. One every day. Can you do one every day? Break it down to bite-sized pieces. Don't let fear overwhelm you. Because once you, once you recognize it, it doesn't own you. You own it. And actually, look at it this whole another way. Sometimes, you know, don't even think of it as, as a warning. Just think of it as a friendly reminder. When something happens, just think of it as a friendly reminder. For example, the analogy I would give you in closing is when you're driving your car and the fuel light comes up, if you went into a mad panic, <gasps> guess what would happen? You'd be stuck. Because you run out of fuel. But if you look at it as a friendly reminder, and not as an alarm, but a friendly reminder, don't call it a warning light, call it a friendly reminder. Change it. You change the emotion. 
So, and don't have alarm clocks, yeah? Yeah, just have a get up and greet the morning with a beautiful smile reminder. Just change it. You, you are powerful. And I want you to get, and you will find very, very rapidly when you do this work, you will go from the emotion of being paralyzed by this thing called fear into the emotion and momentum and fuel for this beautiful gift that we call life. Go out there, share this, and create a life that you love. And leave a legacy. Nah, pay attention. Live a legacy. Don't leave a legacy. Anybody can do that. Live a legacy. I'm Kirit Pankanya. Thank you for your time today. Hope you got great value. And if you haven't, tell me why. All, all feedback is good feedback. Lots of love. Have a beautiful, beautiful evening, morning, afternoon. Thank you for being here. And do that homework. Do that homework. Share, invite, and write down these things. Because you know when you write things down, guess what? You realize you actually own this thing. Otherwise, it's out there. It's in, you know, peripheral. It's a bit woolly and a bit gray and you can't feel it. This way, you write it down, you own it. Then you say, yeah. Who's the daddy? I'll catch you later. Bye for now.